Hello and welcome to the Niche Podcast for Friday, June 21st, 2013. I'm Jonathan Stark. I'm Kelly Shaver. And we're here to talk about building apps that run everywhere. This week, we continue with part three of our screencast on how to build a REST API with Ruby on Rails. If you're listening to the audio-only version of the podcast, please visit niche.cc and look for episode 62, and you can view the video there. Please stay tuned. The Niche Podcast is next. All right. Wow, you sounded like you knew what you were doing. <laughs> it's 62 episodes later, and I'm starting to to get it down. It's only the third video, though. Yeah, it's tricky doing the videos. Apologies to the dear listener for being so late with the videos. It's it's just amazing how much more time it takes to deal with copying files around and editing and saving and exporting and uploading. It just takes forever. Yeah. So hopefully, uh, hopefully we'll get this one out little quicker than the last one but speaking of the last one we left you guys with a bit of a cliffhanger because we had a bug that we couldn't immediately figure out uh but as soon as we stopped recording kelly immediately located the error so uh <laughs> yes isn't that it's classic yeah yeah it's always the same when someone's watching i mean it's always different when someone's watching that made no sense. <laughs> Anywho, so let's pick right back up where we left off, where we encountered the bug. I don't know if, oh yeah, you, I can see on your screen, you've got, you yes. actually have the errors up. So let's just pick it up right from there and uh, off to the races. Yes, this is our, our two failed tests that we had previously. And <clears throat> uh I could just go ahead and fix the bug because I know where it is now, but I thought it might be helpful just to show how to do some, some better logging in your RSpec tests. Great. Yeah, that's perfect. So we can we can see it that way. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back to my test file here. And, okay, wait. It, it was retrieving and updating that we're having problems with. Okay. Uh, I suspect, well, I know for a fact now, but I suspected before it was the same error causing both, so... Ooh. I'm just going to insert some Ooh. lines here. And just... Rails logger debug. Mm-hmm. Yeah, again, it's almost like it's almost like the authors of Rails thought of everything. Yeah, I'm, and I'm just putting some blank lines in there so things will be easier to, to see because I'm not going to fool with typing everything out to run spec tests one at a time or anything like that. So. Right, okay. And before I run them here, though, I'm going to go over and uh, Okay, so, so you're telling the log with yeah, uh, Space Yeah, so I can watch F. it as a test run. Yeah, yeah, so you can watch it live. I love that. Yeah. All right, cool. Oh, man, that's cool. Yeah, so we can just scroll up here, and then we hand this is the response body that we're getting back. And as you can see here in the test, we're looking for a, a JSON object called first name mm -hmm. that should match the, the first name that you sent set in. in the test. Right, right, right. But as you can see here, we have, rather than having that name and everything in the root, it's all nested under a person object. Uh, right. So that's right there. Is their problem? So we were just looking in the wrong place. Um, yeah, but actually, I it's personal preference. I don't like having all of my responses nested under a person when I, I know that I'm retrieving a person. Right. So I'm actually going to go in and <laughs> actually going to go and change that so that the root node doesn't render. Yeah. So to do that. Although I think that makes it technically not a JSON object, but I totally agree with what you're saying. Uh, and it still validates, so. Yeah, I don't remember. Uh, I can't remember. As JSON lint, if you if you ever are messing around with uh, JSON and you're not sure why your stuff's not validating, you can go to jsonlint.org, I think it is. No, it's .com. Is it .com? Check them yeah, out. Yeah, it's .com. Fancy. Yeah, and yeah, it does it does validate through, uh, through JSON lint. Okay, cool. But yeah, so we just create a, it's an initializer, a file here in our initializers folder for Rabble. Mm -hmm. And we'll just, we'll set some Rabble settings here. 
And that just runs through. And then I've got all the, these are all the defaults here that I've just got commented out. Nice. Well, that makes, yeah, yeah. I mean, it makes sense to do this in the, in the template config. So that's cool. Yeah. In the, in the rails initializer. Right. So we're just, we're just going through and just telling it, um, include the root false and include root for child objects. Also false. Mm -hmm. Cool. So then go back run our tests. Everything's green. <laughs> awesome. Awesome. I think I'm getting a little bit of screen lag, but I'm not going to, I'm not going to get too hung up on it because okay. it'll be fine in the video because we're recording on your end. <laughs> yeah. So cool. Awesome. So, uh, you know, we probably goofed around with that for like 30, 30, 40 minutes, which uh, I trimmed out of the video because there was no sense watching it. Yeah, it was just stupidity on my part for not catching it sooner. Just uh, I'm not used to being watched. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, well, I need to hire a guy to come really. here. Come, I need to hire a guy to just come and stand over my shoulder, and watch me code. <laughs> yes, with his arms crossed. Yeah, looking, looking judgmental. Put sunglasses on him. Mirrored sunglasses. Just going. Tisk all the time. Tisk tisk. tisk. Yeah. <laughs> all right, Fab. So that means that with our tests passing, um, we've got yes. our person controller and our person model all set up, right? Uh, with the exception of any kind of authentication. Yes, which is what we're going to talk about this week. Yes. Excellent. Okay. So now, in case it's not obvious, I'll just say that. <clears throat> Um, you know, in the context of this particular application that we're talking about, which is, um, the, this is the Kilo API and it's for tracking calories. You know, when someone logs in, there's no sense showing them everyone's calories. They just want to see your own. So, uh, there'll be a login. And when someone, uh, queries the API, it'll automatically be filtered down to just the records that they have access to view. So, right. So just totally yes. standard. Yes kind of thing you'd have in virtually every API. Yes. Excellent. Are you ready to show us how amazingly easy that is with Ruby on Rails? <laughs> ready to do the authentication. Yeah, we can do the authentication. Um, there's a couple of different parts here. I'm trying to figure out where best to start. Um, I guess before we, before we filter access to this person controller itself, it would probably be good to be able to log in. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah. So, I'm going to create a controller. And this is where we're going to put all of our login logic. Cool. So that's interesting, creating an authentication controller mm -hmm. that, uh, that's funny. It feels like it's not an object. You know what I mean? I mean, like, keep going. I'm well, just yeah, sort of like, yeah, it doesn't, it doesn't have a model. Yeah. Like a color commentary it's just a controller. Right. right. It feels weird. It feels like, it feels like it's the kind of thing maybe you'd put in a helper or you'd create a session model, but, um, but just go ahead. Yeah, like I, I could create a session, you know, you could call it session controller, whatever, if that makes you feel better. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 just because uh, it's one of those things, it's like everything needs it, and it is this weird abstract concept. Yeah. <clears throat> and I've had conversations with people before, and it's like, if you're going to do it, uh, if you're just going to be really pure about rest, then theoretically, you should consider this session as a resource. And, you know, it's like it becomes this, becomes this big thing when really we just need it. We're just really trying to do something simple and it's a really common thing. And so I don't feel too like freaked out about doing special yeah. treatment or like exceptions, you know? Yeah. We'll see. Yeah, it's, you know, it's kind of one of those things you have to deal with on, you know, on every app. So, <laughs> right. Right. So, you know, yeah. dear listener, if you have a different opinion about that, please let us know. It's one of those things that, uh, 
I'm always, I always go back and forth about it. Yeah. It offends my sensibilities on one, on one hand, but on the other hand, it's like, <laughs> let's just get this done, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Well, here, this will, um, this, this may, this may offend you even more <laughs> 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 because I'm going to actually, uh, just for the, for the sake of simplicity and because it kind of makes sense, I'm going to go in and I'm going to add an authenticated, an authenticated method to the person model mm -hmm. so that we can, we can check and make sure that the person is authenticated. Mm -hmm. All right, <clears throat> so we're back in person.rb in the person model, and you're just adding this is my yeah. color commentary for the people who are just listening, adding uh, authenticated as a method on the person, the person class, really. Yeah. And again, this is one of those things that people probably just cut and paste, but do you, can you explain why yeah. it's self dot and authenticated and not just authenticated? Um, yeah, because, um, well, it kind of looks like, so, so for, for example, set calories, yeah, yeah, it seems like it, I wonder if it's similar to in PHP when you have like, uh, you got class methods and you've got object methods, right, right. And it seems like that would be a, an object method. So once it's instantiated, then this would be specific to. To this person, the particular yeah. object, but thing like a thing like hash password is going to be the same regardless of the object. So, right, right. All right. So I have to look this up. I have to look this up because I can never remember it because it's it's kind of long. Yeah. Okay. Is it the same as the hash password above it? Oh, yes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> this so <clears throat> I'm having a real problem scope wise understanding like what's what. <clears throat> If, so inside of self dot authenticated, you're creating a variable called person find by email, which is a function defined somewhere, which is, it's a, it's an active record. Really? Find by email is like a yeah. default thing. Uh, you can do find by underscore and then any column name Oh. for your, in your database column. Interesting. Okay. Uh, okay, so you get a person back, and then if the person comes back, yes, and then if person.password, okay, that makes sense. Yeah, if the person's password and then, encrypted mm -hmm. matches. So, and then you're pulling the password salt out of the record you retrieved, which makes sense. Yeah. And then the password you're passing in, though, is coming from... It's going to be... It's coming from... Uh, the, par the parameters in the post that you're posting to the yep, I got to you. The controller. And this is again, this is like yeah, I I, I understand the confusion that bugs the crap out of me because it's like <laughs> yeah, yeah, it, it kind of bugs me too because it's like if you don't know that's where it's coming from, it's just like, there's no indicator to say right. Like yeah. you feel like at the point the point where you call self dot authenticated, you should be passing in. A string, you know, a right, value. Right, the parameters. Right. Right. To be passing in the password. So that there's not like this tight coupling between the request, which is a very far away thing. Yeah. And the guts of this function. Like this function now has a dependency on the request, which seems a little bonkers to me. Yeah, I, I understand why that feels a little a little icky to you. And I, I kind of <laughs> share it. But at the same time, once you get used to it, it's, you know, easy enough to just do. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I got gotcha. you. But yeah, but yeah, I, I get why you why you feel 
that way. Alright, so now we're going to set the per the access token for the person. So, I see a typo, I think. Ngon hash secret. Um, hmm. Uh, B, then the, on line 56, at least on my screen, it looks like it says... Oh, yeah. This would be engine. Yeah. Ngon. <laughs> All right, so that what that does is if person in person password equals okay makes sense gotcha yeah so it's just gonna get the gonna hash the password that was passed in using the salt and the person and, and see if there's a match mm, salty hash browns mm. <laughs> okay cool so now we're just gonna create what's this secure random dot uh, it's just a library to generate random random strings like I'm creating a random Hex a, okay. like it's like ten, ten character string. Mm -hmm. It's a five hex pairs. And then now that we're gonna save the model, now that we've added the access token, mm -hmm. and then we'll just return the person object. And what's the exclamation point? I know that's it's convention. Um, the exclamation point is going to go ahead and save it. It's not going to worry about running any kind of validations or anything like that. It's just it's just going to do it. <laughs> cool. So you want to you you only want to do that if you're confident in what you're doing. Yeah. Person save. God damn it is it's short yeah. for. Okay. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> I've often had situations in applications where I want the. I sometimes want to delete a record with, you know, silently, like no checking. And other times you do want to kind of do a double check. Yeah. And that would be, it's like a perfect case where you're like, you know, where there's that difference between like, yeah, just, just delete it no matter what or delete it uh, right. with a confirmation of some kind or a validation check. Yep. Yeah. Sometimes you just want to do it no matter what. And then here, if we're, if the, um, no, we're just going to return nil. If we don't have a match. Okay. All right. So we've created the authenticated method. The authenticated method in our person controller. And now we can go back to our authentication controller. Here. This will this will solve your problem. Okay. Gotcha. And then you could go back and accept those right. on the other side. Right. We're yeah. passing email and password. I would to feel it. so much better. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so let's see. <clears throat> how about we to to give this a little context, how is this this will be called with like a post create pointed. Yeah, it's gonna be it's gonna be called uh it's gonna be a post action. We're gonna set up a login route that's gonna point to this. Ah, okay. That's what I was gonna say. Is like we don't have yeah. a if we don't have a model, how do we tell it? Yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna make a couple of routes for it. Okay, cool. All right, so create is when they're logging in. You create yeah. a global person variable, which is global to this class, I guess. Global global to this class, yeah. Okay. Uh to run authenticated and then that is either going to be nil or have the person it's either going to be nil or have the, the person model okay. yes and then, and then respond with and it'll be nil the person okay great yeah. yeah and actually put that up at the top because we're going we're gonna to respond to Jason mm -hmm. it's the only thing we're really worried about Cool. Responding to. There are several different parts to this, and they're spread out across a couple of files. I'm just trying to figure mm. where best to go next with. I mean, me doing. if if yeah. mentally for me it would be seeing the routes would help a lot. Okay. Yeah, we'll go ahead and set up the routes then. Cool. I always think of stuff from like the beginning of the chain of events yeah. 
Okay, so that's... <clears throat> now you're adding in... We're back in the uh, routes.rb file we looked at yes. previously, I think two episodes ago. Um, or maybe it was last, I don't know. But the the when you originally deleted the source stuff, the stuff that was generated automatically, it was set up with like get, create, get, delete, get, or whatever, get, destroy. <laughs> And then we added in the resources mm -hmm. stuff on line, that's now on line five. And so resources, that that is must be expecting after it models, right? So you've got, on line five, you've got resources people. Yeah. And that's resources must be telling it that there's a model called people then? A uh, controller called people. A controller called people, all right. Yeah, it's our people controller. Right, that makes it, I should have known that. Okay, so... Uh, now here on line three, you're saying match instead of resources. Right. We're, we're just going to match. Basically, we're just going to match the text here. Okay. Gotcha. So if if the root level of the EPI URL comes in with a slash login, it's going to match gonna, line three. Right. And line three is going to say, all right, sweet. What do I do with this? Okay. Use the authentication controller and do the action create. This is really cool. Like... Again, I feel like there's a, there's just like a lot to learn. Yeah. But yeah, once you routing, know it, routing changed fairly significantly in Rails three from mm. from earlier versions of Rails. So it feels a little confusing, but I think it's because it's really flexible, which I like. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, I mean, there are uh, there are probably yeah you know, there are three or four different ways you could do this. Right. I mean, it would have a, would I be correct to assume that although it might be more typing, you could also do match people and then pass it the controller in the action uh or no i guess not oh, because as, you a, need to as opposed to the resource people right yeah you you could you could do like for instance down here and then you could add you'd have you know you'd have to specify your verbs that you wanted to accept and oh i see like that, i so. see right 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 yeah you wouldn't want to because it would be more like, <laughs> right would you, you wouldn't want to <laughs> right cool this is yeah, this so, is very cool yes so there is our there is our login route so easy all right that makes me feel better so then that that's going to funnel requests into uh, oh do you have to sh would you put post in here anywhere are you going to do you do you want to specify that and if you did would you do it here or uh, if you if you wanted to, yes, you could do it here. I'm not gonna worry about it. Yeah. But but yes, this is this is where you would do it. Gotcha. Yeah, and as I look down through all this commented on stuff, there's like tons of examples of how to set this up. So. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. There's <laughs> the the default routes file has a ton of examples for different ways you can do routing. Yeah, that's great. And like you can put like you can do regular expressions and your matches and, and all kinds of stuff. So mm. Okay. So then we <laughs> have <laughs> we have our login route, which I probably should have started with so you'd be less confused. No, that's all right. That's pointing to the create action in our login controller. Mm hmm No, I see what you mean. It's hard to say which is really the first thing to look at, but yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so we're basically when when we authenticate, we're just returning the person model, and in a normal application, this would be where you would set session data. Kind of thing. Okay, but, so, but it, in an API, the the client application is expected to retain the that uh, token that we passed back. Right, right. So we're we're responding with the person model, mm -hmm. and. So then what we need to do, right, like we're, we're get, sending back the person model and then they can just take the access token for the person model to make additional requests. Right. So there really is no session to destroy. So our logout method, that we're, our destroy method that we're going to create here is actually, rather than destroying a session, it's going to destroy that um, authentication token. Yes, that makes sense. Just erase that so, value from the person record. <laughs> so I have. I'm going to go ahead and write. I'm going to go ahead and add something to our application controller to um, kind of to set the 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 user that is authenticated by the token. Because we've done 
in the authentication controller, we did um, the user, uh, email password-based authentication. Now in the application controller, I'm going to do the token-based authentication. Right. <clears throat> I got you. And I'm putting it in the application controller because I want to use it everywhere. Makes sense. So does that mean that this this class, which currently is empty, this class like runs before anything else? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, cool. So for any... Well, for anything that inherits from it, I suppose. Right. Right. And from anything that records. Yeah. All right. Well, that's super convenient. Anything so, so people controller inherits based. from application controller. Okay. And this is going to check the headers, I guess. Right. I'm going to pass it. We're passing it as the authorization. All right. So Header. if we looked, if we actually sniffed the traffic, we would see literally a header called authorization. Right. Well, that's a standard header anyway. But. Right. Okay, cool. Okay, so if access token is nil. All right, if it's nil, we're obviously not logged in. Yep. So theoretically, though, they could be trying to log in, right? So I guess right. we're going to handle that case, I'm sure. Oh, I got you. So authenticated as that variable is going to hold the, the person. That right. Makes sense. All right. And if the person is not found, then it's also going to be set to false. So, mm -hmm. so either way, you will get the person model or you will get false. Cool. Whether, so, it's, from, whether it's from failed access or, or not passing anything at all. So inside of every other controller, like the people controller, we could just, we, if we wanted to, well... You're going to show We're going to require, yeah. yeah. <laughs> we, can, we, can, we can, I'll do that in a second. We're going to require okay. authentication before, yeah. 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 before they can do anything. Yeah. So now we're setting, setting authenticated. So. Uh, this is my next question. Can we bomb out here? Yes. So unless authenticated as is not false, basically. So unless it's kind of like saying, if not. Yeah, and actually, I did that wrong. I did that. That should be. Yeah. All right. Yeah. So if we're not authenticated, that require auth. Gotcha. So. <clears throat> so require auth is one function, and it is going to basically bomb out and return a four hundred one if the the if authenticated we can't find ID is false. Yeah, right. If we can't find a person with the access token that's being provided. Mm -hmm. Gotcha. Cool. Love it. Okay. So let me guess we're going back to person or no? We can go, to, per we can go to people. We can go to authentication. Um, actually, if you want, I can go ahead and do the delete action for the authentication controller and just finish that up. Yeah, that makes sense. Okay. Okay, so by virtue of the fact that authentication controller inherits from application controller, that authenticated yes. as it's going to be set. would be yeah. set. Either to either be false or whatever. Now there you're clearing right. out the global variable. You're right, I'm getting rid of the access token mm -hmm. that's set on this particular person that is logged in as authenticated as. Mm -hmm. And then I'm going to Holy mackerel! Wait a second. Are you saying that that authenticated ad is a is a reference to the record? Yes. That is scary convenient. Because <laughs> I was picturing it as like a session variable, so I was like, okay, so she's clearing out of the session variable, but you still have to find the person in the database. No, and no, it's a reference from there. to the record. Yeah. Holy cannoli! Yeah. Wow. That is cool. Yeah. And then we're just going to render nothing because we're logged out. And now, even though it's inheriting from, unless we actually call that authenticated or that require auth um, function, or of course the value of authenticated is, is not going to be set. So we're going to set up a before filter. So let's see, before filter require auth. Okay, so walk me through that one more time. You've got... You've okay. got require auth. That makes sense. So before filter is mm -hmm. going to call. It's going to, right. It's going to call require auth before it does destroy. 
is re only only requiring that filter on the destroy. So, yeah, so we're going to make sure, you know, you have to be logged in before, you have to be authenticated before you can log out. So. Yes, yes, yes. Yes. So now we can go back to the allows you, prevents you from control. logging out someone you're not logged in as. Right. Right, so we're doing basically the same kind of thing here, only <clears throat> it's not... Right. Is it like always, though? Except... Correct. Right, because you had to be able to create an account without being logged in. Right. That's really cool. Like, the except is really cool, and the only is really cool. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, you could you could do... You could do the same thing with either one of them alone, but... So it's kind of like if and un if it's kind of like if and unless you can you could do it with just one, you know. <laughs> yeah. Man. Yeah. And I mean, now you, you just have to accept the syntax. It's super wacky. Like when you when you look at it and you're used to a regular C based language. Yeah, if you're used to a C based language, the 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 change in syntax is the hardest part of the learning curve because it's so different. Yeah, so like for you got a couple things going on here that are throwing me, but I'm just going to I'm just going to get used to it, but I want to say it out loud in case the dear listener is feeling my pain. So, you've got first of all you get this colon syntax which mm -hmm. I to, I don't understand to this day. Like what I, I sort I've read about it and it's like it saves memory space because you're not recreating it's kind of like a static memory location or something. But it's not obvious to me when it's kind of like here you, you see the the colon uh, syntax. Kind of like not obvious, not obvious when you should use it and when you. Right, like, like yeah. There's a noticeable lack of double quotes everywhere. Yeah. So there's some, like like for example on line nine, why isn't that colon people slash show? You know, and then it, yeah, because you're passing the path to the view file to the render function. Right, but isn't the before filter? I feel like the before filter is a function that accepts two parameters. It's it's the the method to run and then comma another parameter uh, options. I mean, it looks just like a JavaScript function if you throw yeah. If you, if you threw, threw if you threw parentheses around it. Yeah, if you threw parentheses around it and you put quotes uh, around, throw parentheses around it, get rid of the colons, and and um, uh, put double quotes around the word create I'm not even it's like it's weird it doesn't even <laughs> that's not even right that doesn't even map yeah <laughs> so I mean there's just no way around it you just have to get used to it yeah. you just have to like submit to the <laughs> submit to the rails authors <laughs> and there's a lot of reason to because there's so much good stuff here once it you get is, used it to is. it it's just like you know I mean getting started you must spend a ton of time on stack overflow just copying and pasting stuff yeah, and actually I've said it before and I'll I'll say it again. If you're just if you're starting out with Ruby, trying to pick up Ruby and Rails both at the same time can be a, like a really big hurdle. Yes. So, like, you know, start with Sinatra. That is what I'm <laughs> that, and that's what I'm that's my that's the probably the crux of my problem right here is that I'm only You're trying to do both. I'm partially yeah. familiar with Ra uh, Ruby and I kind of get it, but it's almost like I need to go through a project where I write Ruby the way that I write JavaScript and PHP. And then I get sick of that. <laughs> and then I go, okay, this stinks. Yeah, if you, I mean, if you wanted to, you could put parentheses and curly braces everywhere. But <laughs> I, I, I love my curly braces. What can I say? <laughs> it's the it's scope. Like JavaScript, yeah. is, like everything in JavaScript is of scope. Like what does this mean? The word this. Like what does that yeah. mean in any given context? Yeah. And here it's just so much is left to. You could like this is all great when it works, but when it doesn't work, you just don't like. I wouldn't know even the first. I have the first idea of where to start looking. Yeah, well, that's that's another one of the things that I really love about Ruby is you get really good, really good error messages and tons of testing tools. Yeah, that's cool. So, so you don't have to know what you're doing. No. <laughs> It's not like JavaScript. <laughs> Any idiot can do it. <laughs> um, I'm trying to get some hate mail from the, uh, some kind of reaction from the dear some listener. Some kind of reaction. Yeah. yeah. Ruby sucks. Yeah. <laughs> what do you think about that, dear listener? 
No, I'm totally kidding. This is awesome. It is. It is. It, it is hard and, to get used to, but it is awesome. Yes, and one there's one last one last part that I want to do here is right now we're not doing any kind of like like you're you're authenticating, mm-hmm. and you have to be authenticated. But right now, these IDs could be like the, like you could you could totally update someone else's information just by passing different IDs because you're authenticated. So. Right, because you're authenticated. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to set up a a method down here to make sure that you have access to – that the stuff you're accessing only belongs to you. Mm-hmm. And I'm, I'm going to do it that way. So, I mean, that way if you – like if you want to add an admin role later or something like that, you can just check and make sure, oh, it's it's either belongs to you or, you know, you're an admin. So Yeah, and it, I mean the person, the person model is sort of an exception because you could – do person find by access token, but you wouldn't have yeah. that. You wouldn't have the benefit of that inside the entries model that we would create later. Right, right. So this is this pattern will be you could use in any of the. Right. So what I'm going to do actually. I mean, you wouldn't want anyone to be able to edit other people's records, right? Right. That would never right. happen. Unless you had some kind of admin role. That would never happen in an application. <laughs> <laughs> There's unless again. I love unless. It's... Okay, so verify access per, and they're gonna do before filter verify access. Sweet. Okay, this is like, this is the way you, my brain thinks about it. You mm-hmm. just want to say at the top like verify access, except on create, of course, because you've got no token at that point. Right. And yeah, so let me see verify access. So I see now the thing is I can imagine that in a little bit more complicated application that verify access could get kind of complicated. Right, yeah, it could. It could. Which? You could abstract it out to the person model if you wanted to. Mm, right, I was going to ask you that. Could you put it farther down? Yeah, so you, could that... ab- you could abstract it out to the person model, or if it was generic enough, you could, or sorry, if, you, um, if it was generic enough, you could put it in the application controller, but it's usually not going to be. Mm-hmm. Yeah, this is, so... We've talked about uh, parse in the past, mm-hmm. which was like this really kind of amazing um, multi-purpose or all-purpose API that you can kind of just create stuff on the fly. It was re- it's really slick, but then it got bought by, bought, bought by Facebook, so forget it. Yeah. And uh, but they... it's funny because I started talking about it in the past tense, like it no longer existed. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Give me a hard time about it. Yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah, I would like never use it now. There's no yeah. way. But. Uh, the the they don't do it like this they use um access control lists on each Mm -hmm. resource yeah which feels really gross to me because you're you don't have a central spot to put it or let let me put it this way that felt really gross to me until i realized it's exactly how file permissions work in unix and Mm. i I was like yeah it is ah that's kind of cool so you retrieve the record, like your your the the API retrieves the record, and then it finds out like it does all that stuff at a record level, which I I don't completely have my head around, but I do think it's kind of cool. Yeah. Because you don't, it's like you use the exact same kind of logic everywhere, regardless of the record type. There's not like a table that manages permissions like back in the right. back in the day. Basically, permissions were kind of like. It's sort of easy to do on a table or a field level if you're thinking about things from a database standpoint, but it was a lot mm-hmm. trickier when it was down to a record level. Like, like the individual record level, yeah. Yeah, but yeah. ACL really is the solution for that. It seems like a really, really good solution for that. But Yeah, yeah. Much, much more granularity. Right. Yes. So, anywho. So, yes. But, again, this is like looking really simple, really easy to read. 
Yeah, yeah. You can, and like I said, the the verify access you could you could abstract it away to to somewhere else more more centrally located. And mm-hmm. if I was dealing with a bunch of different models, I I would. But we just have two here, so yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, one last thing, since we're we're setting person here, we don't need to. Right, because that verify access is going to run before all of these other ones. Right. With the exception of create, which is a new person anyway. Yeah. It's funny because this, like, as much as I'm belly aching about the syntax, the details of the syntax, the overall structure of it is the way I think about the life cycle of a request. Yeah, it's 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 so. I mean, the syntax definitely takes some getting used to, but it's so clean. Mm. Yeah. Cool. Fab. All right, so. What do we have? What's the next thing? What didn't we do yet? Uh, we could test those if you want to. Sure. Maybe they'll work. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we didn't get nothing. Okay. Um, we test login first. Okay. So creating a spec file for the authentication controller. Yep. So then we're going to create a person. Mm -hmm. So person equals factory. Go create person. Yeah. It's going to inspect the model, create some phony. Make sure the person can log in. Yeah. Yeah. Factory will create person. Do we need faker here to create fake data or? Uh, and no, because we're doing we're calling Factory Girl, so Factory Girl will use Factory Girl uses Faker. Remember, we set up the set up the factory for it. Gotcha. With Faker yes. Previously. I was okay. Yep, great. That's even better. And setting the request headers seems like something you might be able to do at the Factory Girl level. Um, you could probably do it at the in the um spec helper. Because there's like every in every case we're going to be doing that right like for all tests. Yeah. And then post create, and that's pointed at authentication controller. We're going to do. Okay. Cool. Should we do? Is that on line five? What is that? If can log in or it? It. It okay. Actually, I'm missing a do after that. I see. Okay. Something looked funny up there. Yeah. Yeah, it did. <laughs> All right. So. Explains why my auto indent broke, too. <laughs> <laughs> and. Do we want to test create, too, right? Like. No, wait. Oh, no, this is authentic. That, that is going to call but, create on the author, right, right, um, right, authorization. Right. Sorry, yeah. Having authentication. That, having that. That's like. <laughs> No object is getting created. No objects were harmed in the process of <laughs> <laughs> creating this person. And actually, I'm going to... So now can log out. And yeah. I'm going to send in the authorization header that we got from that person that you just created. Mm-hmm. Well, you created a person, but we have to log them in to log out, right? Um, actually, when you create a person the first time, it's going to return. Um, it's, it creates an access token and returns it. Did it? Okay. So I didn't realize. Yeah, we have um, here, in our, here in our person model. So create. Uh, before create, we're going to create an access token so that they can log in right away. Sweet. Okay, great. Good thinking. <laughs> and what is the response? What should the response be on that? Should be a success. Is it? It's, it's going to be. It should, it's going to be a two hundred four. Uh huh. But. Okay. Cool. And then we can run those and see see where my type was are today. <laughs> yeah. My screen didn't refresh. Did it work? Nope. So failed as expected? 
failed as expected. Yeah, er errors as expected. <laughs> I can't see it, but so can you. Yeah, I've got an error in my authentication controller. Uh, sorry about All right. that. I told you I told you wrong before. I don't know what I was thinking. I was completely like brain fart moment. Just I'm not used to talking about code and writing it at the same time. <laughs> <laughs> in our person model here. Yes. This will make you feel better too. Is your screen refreshed? It is. I feel uh, so much better. We do have to pass. Is it because you're passing it in? Like if you didn't pass it in the calling file, would you be expected to, like, could you skip that and just have some magic work? Like you, you could, you could just like leave that out and just access params password. Yeah. I think that's what, that yeah. would have made more sense to me too. Like if you, if you left that off yeah, and just I think params that was, password on 56. Yeah. Yeah. That that's actually probably would have made, the cause. Okay. Okay, cool. I like yeah, this yeah. a lot better. Yeah, this this feels better than than accessing params directly from inside this method. All right, good. So hopefully no one will ever let you live that down. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure they won't. <laughs> but hey, you know what? I mean, this just speaks to how awesome the tests are. Yeah, yeah. All right, cool. So that so now let's let's see. Does that uh, does that work it out now? Yeah, we've got a route here. No, I've got a routing error and several other things. That's all. That's all one of them. <laughs> cool. Well, this is my favorite part. Like, because like the debugging. Yeah, because it's easy for someone who's just like, oh, look, just go like this and go like this, and like, and it just works. But it never works like that. It like never you, just works. Yeah. No, it never just works. And you go in, you're like, you can't figure out. Like the the thing that you really want to learn is how to figure out what's going wrong, so you can fix it on your own instead of just copying and pasting code from a video. Yeah. Or whatever, or like a tutorial site. Yeah, okay, here's here's one. We had a log in out, we forgot to add a log out. Okay, awesome. Totally makes sense. And let's, let's just for my, can we jump into that authentication controller just for a second? Sure just like make the visual mental connection between line four and the controller itself. So log out. So it's expecting it's a word, the word log out in the URL and it's going to run the destroy, destroy. method. Awesome. Yeah. Gotcha. Yeah. And our test was saying, Hey, there's no route map to destroy. So. This is so cool. So then we'll run our spec again and we should have one less failure. Or not. Can you just test the people controller to see if uh, maybe there's like some kind of syntax error in there that's causing everything to fail? Yeah, I can just check people. Right, because if one of the before filters was just rejecting everything, then you wouldn't be able to. Right. Yeah, it's what well, it's the um four filter that's failing. Cool. That explains why the logout's not working either, because it also requires the four before filter. Right. So we'll go to our application controller. Oh, duh! Of course, it's failing in the um. In the spec, we're not, we're not, in our test, we're not passing the authorization header. Uh, we weren't? Not in the... Not in people, right, because we deleted, the, we commented those out last week or whatever. Right, we deleted those last week. Right, so it was never getting the header, so it was... Right, so should, that was... Should help a little bit. Or not. <laughs> we may have to leave on a cliffhanger again because I have another call in four minutes. <laughs> That's okay. Another cliffhanger, folks. I'm sure as soon as we, in the next two minutes, you'll figure it out. Yes, I'm sure I will. All right. So we'll leave you on another cliffhanger. That's our show for this week.
I'm Jonathan Stark. And I'm Kelly Shaver. And we hope you join us again next week for the resolution to this this tense issue. (laughs) (laughs) See you next week. Bye. Bye.